This is Michael Popak, and by the looks of things, it's time for Legal AF After Dark. Will Donald Trump's $175 million, well, I'll call it a bond for now, will it be accepted by Judge Angoron in New York State Supreme Court this week, or will it be rejected? And if it's rejected, what happens to the $465 million civil fraud judgment that Letitia James obtained on behalf of the people of the state of New York against Donald Trump? Can she collect on it? Does she have to wait? What's the role of the appellate division? Division First Department Appeals Court in all of this. Will Donald Trump seek a stay? Want to know more? Do I have your attention now? Tune in to Legal AF. And to remind everybody, a, a civil judgment was entered against Donald Trump a few months back by Justice Ngoron in the amount of $464 million for Donald Trump's systemic and persistent fraud and inflation, uh, inflating his valuations of various properties fraudulently. It was a 90 plus page order. Donald Trump had a certain amount of days if he wanted to file an appeal and stay the enforcement of the uh, and stay the enforcement of the judgment pending the appeal, he would have to post a bond. That's not unique to Donald Trump. Um, it's not a criminal case. That's a civil case, meaning Donald Trump lost a monetary judgment and if he wants to avail himself of the privilege of staying the enforcement where the prevailing party, in this case, the New York Attorney General's office, can get their money now because they're the winning side. If you want to stop that or pause that justice from being served while you appeal, the law for everybody is you have to post that bond that's pretty much equal to the judgment amount. Well, Trump waits until the last minute files an emergency appeal with the appellate division in New York. And the appellate division in New York, they don't reduce the judgment amount. Trump still owes a $464 million judgment that has compounding interest. But they reduce the bond obligation so it's not equal to 464. They basically picked an arbitrary number of $175 million and they gave Donald Trump 10 extra days. So they gave Donald Trump a discount on the bond. He's supposed to be this billionaire, but he claimed basically like he's indigent or he claimed he couldn't sell the assets. They, they gave him a break and then they gave him 10 days. And this is what I say. You give him an inch, he screws you every time. He's a perennial con artist. So what does he do? He doesn't go to a normal surety bond company. Look, to his credit, in the E. Jean Carroll case, he went to Chubb Insurance, which does business under a surety bond as federal insurance company. They're a real company. They have real assets. They do this. This is what they do. And like it or don't like it, that's the business, one of the business lines that they're in. So there was nothing wrong with that surety bond. And that's where, you know, you and I, Popak, we could be critical about whether they should or shouldn't have been a surety, but we, we reported it. We're calling balls and strikes. Knight Specialty Insurance Company, I had never even heard of it before. You look up on their website, it doesn't even seem they have the assets to be a surety. It doesn't seem like they've ever even done this before. And sure enough, they don't have the assets. And it turns out, and the New York Attorney General's office called them out, and then they issued a response earlier in the week, Knight Specialty Insurance Company, and then the AG issued a response on Friday saying, you only have $135 million in surplus funds to be a surety. You claim you have $500 million in assets, but those aren't liquid. You're only $135 million liquid. The bond is $175. Your liquidity is underneath the bond. And then you want to take a look at what they're claiming that they're holding as collateral. And the collateral that's held by the surety doesn't actually provide them control over Donald Trump's assets. Trump still has control over this Schwab account. Trump, under the surety arrangement, has two days where he could basically move his money out um, from this money market account that has cash or cash equivalents. Um, he, he could move the money out if he wants to. And so the AG says, this is not a surety. I don't even know what this, this is like a phony arrangement. This is not okay. 
And so there's a big hearing now on Monday about the validity of this surety bond. And the New York Attorney General is telling Justice Ngoron, stop it. Do not allow this to happen. And Justice Ngoron, I think, is going to say, yeah, I'm not for this. I don't know what the appellate division was thinking. I think Justice Ngoron is not okay with this. Yeah, I think you covered it. Um, I think you covered it really well. Um, we will cover the Monday hearing. We all have our own versions of connections in there. I just emailed one of mine um, who dutifully went to almost every day of the 13 week civil fraud trial itself. And I'm, I'm trying to figure out whether she's gonna be able to get into the bond hearing and give us some really good reporting on that. Either way, we will report on it on our, our best knowledge. I think Judge Ngoron has had enough of um, breaks that Donald Trump has taken for himself when they weren't, uh, he wasn't entitled to it. He basically lied to the appellate, let's call it for what it is. We don't blow smoke or sunshine. He lied to the appellate division, his lawyers did, when he said that he couldn't find, he looked everywhere, and he couldn't find the $465 million bonding company. It was a lie. Because Don Henke, who can't keep his mouth shut, I've never seen him. I, I know more about this surety, and I've been doing this a long time, than I ever thought I would or that I need to know about Don Henke, his companies, uh, you know, the king of the subprime auto loan, who also, who also has decided that he loves his 15 minutes of fame, maybe more than Donald Trump, and keeps talking. And so uh, we learned a lot about him. And we also learned that he was willing to give the $465 million bond on his own say-so to Donald Trump. See, Donald Trump had to go to like a family office bonding company, not a like a legitimate publicly traded bonding company like Chubb that, ha that has actual investors and an actual due diligence and a board of directors. He had to go to a, like a guy, like a guy he shoots pool with or whatever it is, an $8 million uh, donor, donor to the Trump campaign in, in Don Hankey. And... When, but the problem is, I don't know if he's never posted a bond of this. So that's a lie. And the appellate, to my point, and the appellate division said, oh, you can't find a bond. Oh, it's a, okay, we'll lower it to 175 million. That's enough. And even 175 million, where he allegedly has cash in order to do this, we know he's got that Schwab account. He could have just posted or pledged the undertaking of the Schwab account without even having a bonding company in the middle and paying some sort of lower fee. A fee that Don Henke said he didn't charge Don Donald Trump enough because of all the aggravation he's now going through having to defend this bond in the court on Monday. You know, these are, these are friends that you, that you need in your life, like Don Henke. So um, the, having gone to the appellate division and got a tremendous haircut on the amount of the undertaking that had to be posted, he then played with fire again. Like he plays with, you know, one hand has glycer, nitroglycerin and the other one has like gunpowder. And this is Donald Trump every day running around. Think of that image. And he's like, well, let's let's F with the bond. Well, why not? Even though I got a break so that no other person would get, I'm gonna F with it. I'm gonna go to a bonding company that either doesn't know what they're doing, is, in, is borderline insolvent when it comes to this size of a bond, doesn't regularly post bonds in New York. Let's see what happens, what could go wrong? And so we, you and I methodically went through the paperwork that was, that was first it wasn't filed. They, they, they failed to properly upload of the fundamental thing that a surety has to give is their financials. And, they, they le and now we know why they left it out. And then the clerk was like, mm, uh, rejected. You need to upload your financials. You know, go check, go check our, our statute book. Then they uploaded the financials and we were like, oh, now we know why they didn't want to post them. The subsidiary that's posting the bond, Knight Specialty Insurance Company, a subsidiary of another company owned by Don Hankey, it doesn't have enough money for this bond. It has to be some sort of relationship between it and its parent company that would give it enough money. That's where, oh, we've got half a billion dollars and another couple of billion dollars. Yeah, that's like Don Henke's different piggy banks, but they're not, at least on paper, they're not the money that is in the control of this actual excess insurer that's the bonding company. All right, that, so we got that problem. Then they said, well, don't worry, we've got a Schwab account or whatever it was for, 100, for the amount of the bond or more. And then we looked at the paperwork related to that, and it was, well, you don't really have it. And yes, he, but he, but like you said, Ben, he has two days to to do monkey business. So that doesn't give. Remember, we're trying to give 
the judgment creditor. We keep forgetting. There's a judgment creditor here. The people of the state of New York by Letitia James, who has a $465 million judgment. They're entitled to security or they're allowed to collect. Now, and Goron, having heard all this and all the new briefing that you just said the, uh, the attorney general had uh, sent in, and we know Angoron's already a judge, Donald Trump, to be a liar under oath in court that can't be trusted and a, and a serial gag order violator and a serial misogynist on top of it attacking his wife and his principal law clerk. That judge, Angoron, the one that already sat through 13 weeks and found that he and convi- and, and adjudged him to be, along with his company and his kids and every. A, a serial, cons- persistent fraudster in the state of New York for over the last 10 years. That guy is now looking at whether there is fraud or at least misstatements in the financial condition of the bonding company that Donald Trump found. All right, here's what's going to happen. He's going to reject this bond. <laughs> He's going to say the bond is not valid. Whether he gives him additional time, I don't know. But he's going to reject the bond, which means at that moment, until the appellate court said something else, Letitia James would be able to go out to enforce her judgment. But we got the appellate court, which is the same appellate division you and I have talked about at length that sits over civil and criminal courts in New York. We've got them who issued the original um, stay as long as two things happen. One, a proper bond was posted. And two, the um, uh, the uh, appellate record was properly submitted by, by Trump in June which he still has time on the clock left for that. So if Angoron, if Goron uh, blasts the bond out of existence, then Donald Trump will take an immediate emergency appeal to the appellate division. He'll walk in, we we have a hot take up right now. I mean, New York is, is very uh, easy to take emergency applications to the appellate court. We used to rip it off of a form book. We used to call them Bloomberg forms. We'd rip them off and it'd be like a pink, a yellow, and a, and a white. And this is what, now we do an electronic version. It's like three lines. Uh, the repealing Judge and Goron's rejection of the bond and stay collect, enforcement collection. And, and then they'll get a duty judge. They'll get an, an emergency judge that day. So it could be like, we could be doing a lot of reporting on Monday, early Tuesday about this bond. As he, if he gets the on the wrong side of Angoron, running off to appellate court again for another emergency appeal and application. He should have his own window at the appellate court. Like just, just, just say like plaintiff, defendant, appellate, Trump, because he's he's wearing out a path. You know, he's at like a twelve appeals on his various cases in two different courtrooms, um, right at the appellate division. So I think to r- sum it up, rejection of the bond after a full evidentiary hearing. Trump's on the wrong side. Emergency application again to the appellate division, and we'll have to see what they do. Whether they cut him yet another break. Where they just say, "Nope, you had one chance. You told we told you to post the bond. You can you can go collect on your your uh, your 465 million judgment, which means go suck money out of bank accounts, Schwab accounts, uh, everything. Uh, start selling property and the rest to collect the 465." It would be interesting to see if Donald Trump goes to the appellate division if New York Attorney General Letitia James then counters and says that they should reconsider even the reduction and make it be. 464 based on the fact that Donald Trump lied. I mean, potentially open the, uh, the the door to that. And New York Attorney General Letitia James filing, she says um, she says that if uh, once the bond is denied, give Trump seven days to post, and then there'll be a collection. So she's requesting that happen in um, in in seven days. From the order from Ingoron for her to go and um, okay, and good. see and, and, and seize assets. All right, welcome back. That was Legal AF. It's a podcast. We do it on Wednesdays and Saturdays at 8 p.m. Eastern Time on the Midas Touch Network right here. Help them get to 3 million free subscribers. Yep, I said free. All you got to do is hit the button, subscribe, and there you go. It helps. We're building a network with you without outside investors. And then, if you like what we're doing here, that was an example, we curate the top five stories at the intersection of law and politics. Boom, we bring it to you in a podcast we call Legal AF. Wanna know why it's called that? Join us, you'll find out. If you know about Legal AF, and maybe you even caught our recent episode, thank you 
for taking the time to watch that segment again. Maybe you missed it. Take that clip. Help us grow our network. Send it off to friends and family and people in your life and say, hey, there's Legal AF for you. Maybe they'll, that'll be like a little bit of an appetizer, a little bit of a teaser, and they'll join us for our next show. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, <laughs> I'm Michael Popak. That was Legal AF. And we join you. Uh, we, uh, sorry, try it again. Please stays in the pod. We invite you <laughs> to join our audience. So until my next hot take, until my next Legal AF, until my next Patreon exclusive video, this is Michael Popak.